Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about this unusual object that you're going to be seeing on your screen in a few seconds. This right here is a wormhole. No, not a black hole, a wormhole. And we're going to be talking about some of the more interesting facts about uh, these really unusual objects that have been used in science fiction for many decades. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So how I created this wormhole, I'll talk about in one of the next videos, but today we're going to be basically talking about what these things are and how we define them scientifically and if they're actually possible. Now, if you've seen uh, Interstellar, which is one of the best space movies out there, um, you may have, you may remember the scene where uh, they actually enter a wormhole, which we're going to do at the end of this video. But in uh, this video, we're, we're just going to talk about the facts about these wormholes. So, first of all, what exactly is a wormhole? Well, it's actually something that has been defined by Einstein and some of the other scientists early in the 20th century. And specifically here, we're talking about um, a kind of a solution to the field equation that Einstein created, where he basically defined uh, these two objects. One was a black hole and one was a wormhole. Now, both of these were thought to be theoretical, but then we actually discovered black holes. We discovered that they were absolutely real. So, does this also mean that wormholes may be real as well? So, uh, this object here, at least theoretically, would actually have two so-called mouths. This is mouth number one, and we're going to create mouth number two in a few minutes. And um, what you would actually see here is basically it would show you the other side of um, the wormhole. So you would actually get to see what's on the other side right before you entered it, similar to how it was in, in Interstellar. Um, so this wormhole can actually co connect things and connect uh, space over extremely long distances, super, super long distances. Now, as you can see, this particular wormhole is actually orbiting our planet Earth. And I really wanted to actually place it a little bit closer just so you get to see what it would be like if we did have a wormhole orbiting around our planet. Now, imagine this is the future when we actually are able to create wormholes in essentially orbit of our planet Earth so that we can actually then send various spacecraft far, far away in uh, seconds, instead of using um, faster than light travel, instead of using any kind of engine, propellant engine that would require a lot of energy to uh, to reach faraway stars, we would be using wormholes. And here's one in orbit around our planet Earth. It looks very unusual, it looks actually kind of scary almost, almost like a black hole. So I'm actually, I wanted to uh, come closer to the surface of our planet and take a look at what it would, uh, what it would actually look like right from the surface. So, you know, if you're looking into the night skies, what would it actually appear as? And look at this, this is a huge looking eye object. So, uh, back in 1921, this was actually the first time when a scientist by the name of Herman Weyl proposed the idea of a wormhole, he was the first to actually uh, talk about um, a connection between matter in uh, electromagnetic field. And he referred to these as one-dimensional tubes. He didn't really refer to them as wormholes. And then in 1957, a paper by uh, Charles Meissner mentioned a person by the name of John Wheeler talking about these wormholes. So he was actually the first to define this object as an actual wormhole and gave them sort of a name. It wasn't really Einstein, unfortunately, but, uh, you know, Einstein couldn't have come up with everything. Anyway, so why is it that we haven't really detected these yet? And why is it so difficult uh, to actually even have these sort of um, objects theoretically? Well, first of all, it's because Yes, they can have two different uh, so-called mouse uh, entrances, but the problem is, how would you hold it open? So this is where science and physics kind of uh, becomes a bit of an issue. For, uh, for these two holes to actually remain open, for these uh, two wormholes to stay open, you need to actually hold their, th I guess you could call it throat, with what's known as negative energy. 
And uh, this is something that we not only have no idea how to do, but it's also very, very theoretical and would require some kind of exotic matter that really doesn't actually exist in the lab yet and we don't know how to produce them. And we actually haven't really detected any of it just yet. It's all very theoretical. But if we could create these two um, mouths and could somehow hold their throat open with that uh, exotic matter, we would then be able to essentially create wormholes and then transfer it in both directions, um, similar to how it was in Interstellar. And interestingly, the existence of wormholes uh, has been even proposed as a kind of explanation for dark matter. So because we don't really know what dark matter is, uh, some scientists actually think that maybe just maybe the wormholes might be an explanation to the existence of dark matter. So as you can see, the, there's a bit of a, a reflection going on here because uh, it also kind of wraps space and time around it, creating these unusual effects. And so this wormhole cannot actually now reflect Earth inside of it. Now, because uh, wormholes connect space and time, there's also actually another really cool thing about them. And I'm going to show this to you using um, dual wormholes. So we're gonna create two wormholes right now. And so here we go. Here are two wormholes kind of orbiting around one another. And I also gave them a little bit of color so they're a little bit easier to see. And so basically these two are connected right now. If you enter this, you'll exit here and vice versa. Now, interestingly, because one of them is actually moving around the other, and I'm gonna actually move, make them move even faster than that. Because they're kind of connecting space time, if you travel through one of these wormholes, you're actually also not only traveling in space, but you're traveling in time. So what we've just created is essentially a time machine. That's right. This is actually a, a very interesting theoretical way and very kind of a realistic way of creating a time machine. So if the, the uh, wormhole right here has acceleration, if it's moving through space, then if you enter this wormhole, when, uh, when you come out of the other wormhole, you actually are going to be coming out in the past. And uh, if you enter this wormhole, when you come out here, you're going to be coming out in the future, which by itself is kind of interesting and kind of trippy and uh, very unusual. And we'll actually discuss this in more detail later on. But basically, if I were to approach this wormhole right here, and if I were to just enter it by basically just flying through it directly, what I would come out of would be the past, which is very, very interesting. And so if I were to fly out of it, I would be in the past now. And so for all intents and purposes, we've just created an actual working time machine, which is pretty cool, if you ask me at least. And so that's one of the cooler things about wormholes. And basically what this means is that you can convert a wormhole into a time machine by accelerating one of its mouths, which is really, really interesting and very unusual. And so if you were to have one mouth here and another mouth orbiting around this really, really fast, then by entering the middle mouth, you would come out in the past. Obviously, this doesn't mean that you can go anywhere in time. It, you can only go in time since the creation of these wormholes. So they wouldn't allow you to go past that date. But still, pretty cool. And the other really interesting thing about wormholes is that they've even been used to kind of try to explain the Big Bang and uh, a lot of other uh, unusual events. And so one of the theories or one of the hypotheses states that some of the primordial wormholes may have actually uh, existed on microscopic levels and then may have actually been expanded through, uh, through time. And so it's possible that some of these huge wormholes actually do exist somewhere out there in the universe. But obviously, we don't really know where. Anyway, before we finish this video, let's actually fly into one of these wormholes. And there's one right there. It's kind of hard to see, but it's definitely there. And we're going to basically finish this video by getting inside of it. And then in the next video, we're going to continue our discussion and talk a little bit more about other wormholes as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Space out. And as always, bye bye. And here we go. Entering the wormhole now. And now we're exiting the wormhole somewhere on the other side of the universe. Thank you for watching. Space out. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.